We've got a, a bit of a request today uh, from a one of our viewers to have another look at the video that we uploaded a few weeks ago now, uh, First Person View, oh, First yeah, Person Perspective. Cool. Uh, it was actually of me um, doing Kekor with a couple of dojo mates. We're fighting Nito first uh, and then a seventh done at the end. So those are the two things. So let's crack on, man. Let's have a look. Cool. We see this. You got it, eh? Cool. All right. Yep, yep. It's going. It's going. So we start off with the mandatory uh, kitty clash. This is after a training, though, so I was already a bit puffed. Um, already, your heart rate is pretty high. Yeah, it was already, <laughs> sort, of, already sort of high um, before we got started. But it was still bloody cold that day. I remember my feet were really cold. Oh, yeah. Clashes yeah, yeah, yeah. can be very cold. When you did Nito Hiro, do you receive Kirikaishi in this way? Probably. Yeah. Or I just use, I take Hidari Nito, left hand up. So my shoulder is right. left, uh, right hand. Right. So probably I just use right hand only as well. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There, are no, there, are, there are no, you know, uh, regulations or this way has to be done by nito kind of thing so right it's pretty free i think you know right right yeah, at the yeah. moment at the moment yeah yeah for sure um so what happens now is we've done we've done that little warm-up then we go into jigeko right and the thing that i i find with or found with ian uh is that you know comparatively uh, um from the other Nito players in, in New Zealand in particular, he used his shoto pretty well. Um, mm. Often, though, it wasn't necessarily from an offensive point of view. He would use it really well from a defensive point of view. So you could – was I found it really difficult to find openings on him because right. he was quick to lift his hand up and, and block a hikiwaza or something like that. Um but as you you know, like as we go through the fight, and like, like I say, hopefully it's not too laggy uh, to watch. He was reasonably well protected, men and kote, uh, and so it only really left door and ski uh, right. to hit. And I, I don't know, I I always wanted to have variety. I didn't want to just go for the same old targets. Um, and there's a there's a bit in here. See how he goes his, his left hand go. Oh, sorry, his shoulder goes up really quickly after he strikes. So mm -hmm. he's sort of working in. A really good sink between us. See that it goes straight up, uh, and it was really hard to do sort of a a gono sen, sort of a um, a nuki waza or something like that because he was always really well protected. So what what was your strategy against Migi Nito, right hand up? Well, as I say, you know he it he was reasonable. The, the, to find an opening, my, my challenge, I always said my challenge was to try and hit his kote or his men because it was really mm -hmm. well. -protected. I could probably execute katate ski and, and maybe a, a door or get his hand up into a gyaku door or something like that. But I always wanted to try and hit those unhittable things because I trained with them, you know, three times a week. So we were pretty familiar with each other. Right. Um, but if you look at the where he's holding his daito, it's right up by the tsuba. Mm -hmm. And so he, he did that to protect his kote. Um, you know, with the with the ska stopping the the point coming through, and it was reasonably effective. It also gave him a lot more control um, over his shinai because I don't think he was using. I think he was using a reasonably uh, reasonably heavy shinai. Um, it wasn't a thirty seven. I think he may have been using a oh, thirty eight or thirty nine. Oh. So he had a little bit more sort of uh, weight when he would hit. Um, you know, it would, which which was you know all sort of played into us. And what was my strategy? It was, it was to try and capitalize on the change of distance. So now he's holding it at the end. Yeah, he changed right. the grip. He changes <laughs> his grip. So I would watch that, and when he had that, I would fight close, right? Because he can't hit me uh, with Yuko Datotsu when he's you know too close. So I would come in closer when his hand was at the bottom of the tsuka and I would stay out further when his hand was at the top. Uh, and so I would just be constantly watching where his hand was on the tsuka and that would dictate where I would stand. Um, 
and that was that was really my only strategy because the rest of it he was so bloody awkward to to sort of try and hit it's you know what i mean so it was it was an interesting um battle between us it was never really ipong heavy although he did hit me a really good one in that in that video um a really good one uh it was never really that many ipong from either of us it was a sort of a game on who could take advantage of the distance and that's what happens it wasn't that we wanted to beat each other each time it was that we wanted to try and challenge each other each time because like i said we would train two or three times a week together uh and so the the value wasn't in oh i beat you this time and you beat me next time or whatever yeah. it was in trying to challenge each other's strategy um so that yeah that was kind of where we went um most of the time with that but yeah ski and door were open um not that they're my strongest cuts either. Mind you, neither is Koti or men, to be fair. Um, the next one, man, uh, this is uh, Saito Makoto Sensei. Uh, Saito Sensei is an absolute machine. Uh, as you know, you've trained with him when you were over yeah. in New Zealand, right? Uh, super fast. He worked with the Japanese team as their physio for a little Co while. Yeah, coach. Or physio, yeah. Coach, yeah, in, in terms of... So he's... Um, and he's got a few videos out there on youtube about how to stretch and things like that for kendo he's an absolute machine and he's a bloody good guy as well uh, on a personal level but when we were lucky enough to have him um come and train with us in new zealand uh i mean he had a sabbatical he came over as a university right. mm. professor uh, he came over um and trained with us. it was amazing to train with the seventh done right the person who edited this video unfortunately cut out most of the fight <laughs> um but what we've got is the thing is if you watch him and the way he uses look at like much he's using his kensen yeah. like it's it doesn't stop um and the ability his ability to hit you uh when you moved when you moved in he was ready boom he would go uh like he was he was such an asset uh for new zealand kendo when he was over such an asset but you can see like I, i'm really all I can really do is sort of try and match his level of um, intensity and not get hit by him. You had no uh, striking much, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, I think all the striking happened before the, the bit got cut out. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you know when you fight a higher grade and it kind of changes what you want to yeah. do and what you want to achieve from the fight? Um, I wanted quality cuts. I wanted the sensei to say, hey, that was a really quality cut. Um, because his the other thing about Saito Sensei was the use of waza. He used so many waza. Yeah, I here we go. Here's the cut right yeah, man. Lovely, lovely. Oh yes, this is the thing. And and you know, again, you, you fight against a, a good high quality motodachi, and the kakari gecko is hard. Here, 180 beats per minute. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's hard, but it's it flows. You know what I mean? And there it is. Yeah. Man, takes me back. Takes me back. <laughs> the um, you know, like it's it's really cool. It's really cool to to sort of have a look at that. But thinking about my strategy against Nito versus the strategy against Saito Sensei, because they're so different in what they uh what they require, um, you know, and what you want to achieve from it as well. Like I said, against Saito Sensei, I really wanted to get him uh, a good quality man. I'm trying, you know, facing against a, a, a seventh done right. Against Ian, we know the Nito player, we knew each other uh, for a long time. We were much more sort of informal with the way we did it. So we were sort of trying to pick apart each other's stuff uh, or strategies as we went. Uh, and you can mm. see he changes the strategy where he holds his shinai. Saito Sensei's approach, not necessarily a strategy, but his approach was to keep his Kensen totally alive uh, and can, you know, just execute so many different variety of waza throughout it was just a totally different experience and massively beneficial either way right 